Hi guys, welcome to the first 1001 video of the semester. With assignment one being released, it is as good a time as ever to review one of the most important ways you're going to be interacting with tutors, which is asking questions. So this video in particular is going to show you what it means to ask a good question, why you might want to do that, as well as some example bad questions that we'll be less than happy about dealing with and what makes them bad. So why should you care about asking good questions in the first place? Well, they allow me to identify errors in your code much faster. Uh, this second one is a big one for me. If asked correctly, I might not even have to look at your code at all. This is important because there's a little bit of mental work uh, needed to be done when you're switching between talking to a student and reading and looking at their code, and that can really add up during assignment times. So cutting out having to look at people's code, or at least allowing us to find errors faster, means we get to help more people or give the really tough questions more meaningful help. Conversely, bad questions can make us tired much quicker and mean that subsequent students get less help than they might need. So in the next slide, uh, we're going to go over some example bad questions. This first one is my least favorite of all. It just doesn't work. So why is this a bad question? Well, it gives me nothing to work with and expects me to do literally everything. I sort of see it as a bit of a lazy question. Uh, it's definitely one to avoid if you don't wanna get the tutors in a grumpy mood. I can, at the same time though, I can sort of sympathize with what, what you're feeling if you might be wanting to ask this question. Like coding can get really frustrating if you've got a specific bug you've been trying to fix for a long time and you feel like you've done absolutely everything. But even in that case, you know, we can just reword your question a little bit better so that the tutor is going to be able to give you more meaningful help as opposed to, you know, just some exasperated remark like this. This second one is almost the same sort of thing. Can you see where I'm going wrong? Uh, it's just a lazy question. It's like, can you read through my code and you do my work for me, essentially? And that's what we're going to try and avoid with the good question template that's going to come in a few slides. This third question, I mean, although it's not really a question, one and three, I dislike less than the first two in that, you know, at least you're giving me something to go with. It's not working, you've got this error message. What I don't like about this is that you're still not telling me what you've tried to do or what you've done previously to me coming over to help you, you know? Have you tried to Google that error message? If you did, you'd most likely get a very helpful Stack Overflow post telling you in exactly what cases that error message might arise. In any cases, this is still a lazy question, although it's maybe not as bad as the first two. You can ignore this slide. This is just a dumb meme I decided to include just because, you know, it's education. Every single slideshow needs to have at least one horrible joke or something in it. So how do we improve our practicals? You guys might not have experience with this yet, but close to assignment due dates and certainly towards the end of the semester, the queue is jam-packed and tutors will go between student questions practically without break. And because you guys can be waiting in the queue for up to an hour in some cases, the easiest fix in my mind is that while you're waiting uh, for your question to be answered, do some preparation work. And on the next slide is the template that you can prepare with. So first of all, start with the background info. What's the general problem you're trying to solve? So for example, I am working on the string concatenation MyPyTutor problem from week two. Or you know, I'm working on getting decryption done for the assignment and I've done all the work up until that point. The reason why you might want to provide some background info is because it just gets the tutor's mind prepared for the question you're about to ask. A lot of the times uh, while you're asking me a question, I'm actively trying to figure out what you've done so far, you know, maybe what you're coming into this question with. Section two, what is the more specific issue that you're facing? If you have an error message uh, and your program's not running, this is the point in which you would bring that up with the tutor. If on the other hand, your problem was a little bit more subtle, so your program was terminating, but it might not have been terminating with the values you're expecting or the values which the task sheet might demand in that specific case this is also the time which you would bring that up. Thirdly and lastly, please tell me what you've tried so far. Uh, so what have you done previous to me coming over to you to try and solve the error message? Or sorry, the issue, I guess. It's not always an error message. Have you Googled it? 
if you have, uh, please show me any relevant Stack Overflow threads because you know I might be able to get more from them than you did if you read them and still didn't fix the issue. So on this slide, I have an example of a really good question uh, that puts together everything that we just saw in the previous template. I've split the sentences out uh, into their specific sections as they related back to the template. The first one correlates with the background information. The orange correlates with the specific question, which is section two. And blue is the background, oh, sorry, what is it? The, the things you've tried, right? Overall, this makes for a super simple question to solve, right? So I would be able to work through this with the student most likely without being able, or sorry, without having to look at their code first. And you can read through that in your own time, right? I don't have to read the whole thing. Finally, let's just walk through some simple quality of life improvements uh, when we come over and help you guys. So make sure your font size is appropriate. I don't want to have to stick my face like an inch away from the screen to read that little ant size text you have there. It's a super, super simple thing. Just make it like 18 plus. Um, make sure your brightness is up on your screen as well. If you have a big string of questions you've been waiting to ask while you've been in the queue for an hour and a half, uh, keep track of them. I mean, it's pretty easy just to write them down. It saves you having to scramble, you know, when we're talking just like, oh, what was my next question? Oh, I've forgotten it. And then you might think of it like five minutes later after we've already left and get quite frustrated, you know. Lastly, uh, when we sit down with you, don't tell us to wait a second and then spend a minute typing. Uh, I mean, very rarely this happens. It's just that when it does, it makes a large impact on uh, me at least. So I decided to include it there. But that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if I get a lazy question at any point during my practicals or tutorials, I'm going to bring up this link on your computer and walk away. Uh, also, the onus is on you now if you've watched the video to you know actually ask questions using that template. Uh, apart from that, thank you for watching. Good luck on your assignments.